So, Nils, I want to play a lot of your songs during our interview and talk about them a little bit and uh, um, just have a lot of fun uh, because I think, you know, the, the, you know, you can talk all you want, but the music is what speaks to best for you. And I, I hope some of these songs you're going to play uh, when, when you come to, uh, to the Lavoie, but also uh, you can hear uh, all these songs on uh, his new uh, Face to Music 10 disc box set, which is on uh, uh, Concord, uh, nine CDs and a, a DVD covering uh, 45 years in music. Um, and I think, uh, I, think, I think one of the things that I, I, I was interesting to me is um, throughout this whole box set, you're able to uh, touch upon a lot of the people and, and, and include the people that you've worked with over the years. And, uh, and I think we should start where, where it sort of all began for you with, with Neil Young. And um, we're going we're gonna, to uh, play a little bit of you. Uh, this was uh, with Neil Young on vocals and harmonica. Uh, and let's, let's start a little bit with that, Lauren. Sounds great. So for those that don't know out there, uh, Nils, you, you uh, obviously were a member of Crazy Horse for a few years and got to be uh, uh, pretty tight with uh, with Neil along the way. So uh, how did how did this song come about, and uh, and how did you invite him uh, into into the mix uh, to do something for you? Well, I was um, in uh, I think 1990 or 91. I made an album called Crooked Line. Uh, it was one of the songs I wrote that I, I'm still singing in my shows. It, it works really well. And <clears throat> there are uh, a few numbers. Eric Amble, the producer, and I both, of course, are giant Neil Young fans. And there are a few songs that we thought, wouldn't it be nice to get his help on? And uh, he was kind enough to let us fly out to his ranch, where I've had many a great time rehearsing bands through the years. And, uh, you know, as Neil always does, you don't really coach him much. You just play the song and... You know, he loved the groove. Johnny B was on drums. He just thought it was such a powerful groove. And he just kind of, he, he'll sit there and listen to it a few times through and came up with some unusual harmonies. And then it was his idea. He said, uh, do you have anything going on in the solo? I said, not really, no. I was a very basic track. He said, let me uh, try a harmonica solo for you and put a beautiful one in there. So the guy is that great. You just stand back, let him listen, and do whatever the hell they want and it always works out that's awesome and another song uh, we can play a little bit of uh, we'll play right now is uh, and we'll talk about it when we come back and not only did Neil Young help you out but but the band that uh, when you went uh, you know after you, I guess after your days with uh, with Neil you started Grin right uh, uh, along uh, your band which was uh, a really cool rocking band and uh, you guys did uh, Keith Don't Go uh, Lauren why don't we uh, yeah we uh, we actually uh, started I was with Grin before I met Neil and I just, uh, we were, I was 17, I hit the road in 68, and not knowing anything about the music industry, I'd sneak backstage and ask for advice, and <laughs> Neil was kind kind enough to give me a lot of it, uh, give me a lot of his time, uh, let me play some songs, and that started a, a long friendship that's gone on to this day. A year later, at 18 years of age, uh, I did the After the Gold Rush record with him on piano, guitar, and vocal. But anyway, a few years later, Grin was making the, we were recording in 1973 at Bias Studios in Virginia, and Neil was passing through, and his producer and, and our producer mentor, and basically my big brother David Briggs, who took me under his wing, thanks to Neil, uh, when I was 17, uh, asked Neil to come to the studio in Virginia and uh, wound up playing piano and singing, which you don't hear him often as a piano session player, even though he's a great one. So, yeah, it's, it's probably my favorite version that never got released, and Neil was kind enough... Uh, it was, took took months to find, but uh, we actually found the master tape and mixed it up properly in the same room we recorded it, and Neil gave us permission to share it with uh, him on piano and vocal. All right, uh, let's play a little bit of uh, Keith Don't Go. Awesome. Can, are you able to hear that, Nils, now or not? No. Okay. That's all right. I, <laughs> you, I trust you're playing it. <laughs> you, you, you know, you know, uh, you know what it sounds like. Uh, really, really cool rock and song. I love that. And uh, uh, once again, uh, these songs that you're hearing are from uh, Nils from Face to Music, uh, the ten disc box set, uh, nine CDs and a DVD covering 45 years of music. And Nils uh, will be uh, acoustic duo 8 p.m. Friday, uh, May 8th, uh, at the Lavoy Theater in Millville. You can um, get tickets at lavoy.net. 
uh, just for thirty bucks, uh, forty dollars day of show. Um, so I guess uh, you know everyone, uh, of course, uh, Nils. You probably can't go through an interview without talking about, yeah, and, and, and you, I'm sure you wouldn't want to without uh, what Bruce Springsteen uh, um, has done for your career as far as uh, bringing you into the mix. Uh, you've been with him for uh, over twenty years now, and uh, and you were named uh, a member of the E Street Band, and then uh, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame last year. Had a, uh, I guess, or is that yeah, last year? So uh, had to be a pretty good thrill yeah, for you. Next month will be thirty one years in the band and. That was a beautiful experience, a bit bittersweet, because, of course, we had thought they should figure it out while Clarence and Danny were alive, and I think they'd agree. But anyway, it was still a beautiful experience, and glad to have my uh, Jersey girl wife Amy there and spend a few days in New York and Brooklyn and see a lot of friends in the band and, you know, through the years of music. And, uh, hey, it's just, uh, I used to buy tickets to go see the E Street Band in the 70s and early 80s, and now I've got a much better seat. Uh, <laughs> A little more homework and hard work involved, but uh, I'll, I'll, it's a great trade for me, and always honored to be uh, in the East Street Band anytime we play anywhere. So, what was it like joining the already established and famous East Street Band? You know, just before uh, that Born in the USA today, uh, boys Born in the USA tour. Was, was it difficult trying to you know replace a fan favorite like Steve Van Zandt at that point? I mean, that was before he came back. I mean, any kind of backlash from fans? You know, or what was what was the feeling like when you first joined them? Well, you know, I'm. It was it was a bit overwhelming, but some of the things that were happening was um, at that point. You know, I'd been on the road since 1968, and I'd fallen in love with performing. Uh, I would, you know, bet that nobody loves the challenge and walking in front of an audience with a great band any more than me. So that's something that you know I, I felt like I was really good at, and uh, I had nothing to do with the decision um, that was between Bruce and Steve and. God bless Steve, he's a great solo artist, and he invested so many decades with the band, he felt he needed to go his own way, and he did do some great solo work at that point. So, nothing to do with me, they needed a guitarist, and I had a long history uh, and friendship with Bruce, and, uh, you know, we talked often about how much I enjoyed the Neil Young projects, and how uh, I was somebody who enjoyed not being in a, somebody who enjoyed being in a great band, not necessarily having to be the band leader every day of your life. So I think he filed that away, and I'm not sure uh, what the process was up until I got the call, but he invited me up to Jersey to jam a couple of days, and I did, and, uh, you know, like a beautiful gift. It felt good to him and the band, and he asked me to join. They needed somebody, and I thought to myself, well, if not me, I mean, you know, let's find out, because no one's going to love it any more than me. I'm a giant fan of Bruce's writing and the band itself. And uh, fortunately, after a couple of days of jamming, it all worked out. And yeah, the first 20 shows were quite hairy for me. And I didn't have enough. It was about a month before opening night of the fabled Born in USA tour. So I didn't have the time I wanted to get ready. But everyone was very helpful from Bruce to every guy in the band for every question I had. And just through osmosis, after about 20 shows, I, I reached a very different level of comfortability and never looked back. So That's awesome. a beautiful experience, and you know, it's now 30 years later. We've had hundreds and hundreds of shows past that tour, and very grateful for that. So, what made you begin using a, a thumb pick instead of a traditional picking method? And and and, and were you concerned that an orthodox style would not would not fit in with the sound of the band, or or was that never an issue? Uh, no, I, by that point, it was just rock and roll. However, you accomplish it, but. Uh, I was playing classical accordion since age five and studied for nine years, entered contests. It was a great musical backdrop. And then as a teenager, about 14, uh, 13, 14, we all fell in love with the Beatles, the Stones, British Invasion, pretty much discovered Saxville, Motown, and all the old blues greats through them. Right. Uh, my brother Tom started playing guitar in the home. My dad had a beat-up old guitar. He really wasn't a player, but him and my mom danced all the time, so they supported any musical journey of, of their children. I had three younger brothers, and Tommy started playing, who later wound up in Grin. But anyway, he showed me a few chords, and in my dad's guitar case, there was a thumb pick. And I'm left-handed, so my right side took a long time to get used to the right hand strumming, and I was using the thumb pick. And I didn't know it, but after about nine months of sounding terrible, I got a, the hang of it a bit started enjoying it and all the young players said you got to play rock with a flat pick and you know i still remember thinking i can't face sounding awful for nine more months to learn with a new pick i'll stick with the thumb pick and over the years it led to a finger picking style that served me well and uh, it don't matter what you're using some people play with no pick 
uh, whatever you're playing with, the goal is to create something that enhances the song and touches people in front of you. And however you accomplish that is fine. I think some of that picking uh, we can uh, hear on uh, this song, uh, and maybe we can talk about it after we hear it a little bit, Nils. This is uh, In Your Hands, which uh, uh, Nils did with uh, Willie Nelson and the Lofgren Brothers. In Your Hands. Amazing grace in the mystery of our dance A startling beauty in the calm of your glance Yeah, I hear it now. I, I did hear it. Uh, our daring yeah. birth yeah, it... of new hope in your eyes Your fingers trace my face uh, that's a sweet song, man. Uh, so I'm glad you can hear it now. Our producer took care of that. Um, so uh, tell us a little bit about the background of that and, uh, and your relationship with Willie. Well, um, uh, during a Kennedy Center honor show, um, I'm buddies with his manager, Mark Rothbaum, who's a good friend through the years. And Willie's guitar player was ill, and he asked me to sub on the Kennedy Center honors where Willie was playing for... Uh, his buddy Robert Redford, who was getting inducted. So I got to sit in and take care of that beautiful guitar of his and uh, play with Willie. Um, and, uh, you know, Mickey Raphael, the harmonica player, is an old buddy, too. So that was a great long weekend in New York. And Amy came, my wife, and we had a ball. It was very unusual and beautiful. Kennedy Center Honors, great class. They had um, Tina Turner, and there was Tony Bennett, uh, Diane Farrell. It was just a beautiful uh, experience. And uh, I had written a song, my first song on Dobro, actually, my first composition on Bottleneck Dobro, which I taught myself on the Rising Tour. I wrote for my wife Amy on Christmas, called In Your Hands. And uh, Mark Rothbaum said, look, pick a song, I'll try to get Willie to do a duet. So I picked that song, and when I had it recorded, Willie listened to the track and said he'd be happy to do a duet. And um, literally during the rehearsals at Kennedy Center, we drove across the bridge to Billy Wolf's studio, who's a great engineer, and mixed it and mastered it. Willie walked in and sang just gorgeous verses and uh, choruses, and my Lofton brothers came in and sang a very beautiful, special event, thanks to all of them. Very cool. Uh, that music can be heard on uh, Face to Music, the 10-disc box, uh, ten disc box set from Nils uh, Lofgren, nine CDs and a DVD covering 45 years of music. And he'll be uh, doing an acoustic duo show 8 p.m. Friday, May 8th. Uh, tickets are just 30 bucks, $40 on the day of show. Go to levoy.net. And you go to nilslofgren.com as well and check out uh, his entire tour uh, as he plays uh, eight dates uh, right here in the Northeast, which is uh, a really cool thing. So um, I want to play a little bit of uh, one of the solos uh, um, from one of Bruce's uh, uh, very well-known song that, that you contributed to. And I guess it's one of your most well-known solos, uh, Nils, uh, Tunnel of Love. Let's play that a little bit. Sure. Into this tunnel of love. Well, there's a crazy man showing us both in five D. I'm laughing at you. Let's hang in there for your solo. Oh, there it is. So, um, you know, Bruce likes to play his own stuff, obviously. Uh, he plays a lot of his own solos. And as a guitarist, uh, I'm sure it's not frustrating for you, but uh, it's nice, uh, I guess, once when you get to lay them down like that. Yeah, you know, people always think that, uh, I have to be honest, I love I, probably 70, 80% of the last 46 years on the road, I'm the lead singer, I'm the soloist. So. I, I I don't have to play the solos. I, I I actually love being in a band where I play keyboards or play rhythm. All oh, in '99 when Steve came back into the E Street Band, I challenged myself to learn a little uh, dobro, bottleneck, lap steel, pedal steel, six string yep. banjo, and uh, I'm happy to 
play a supporting role. It's, it's stuff I don't get to do, and I'm just as into it, and I enjoy it just as much, maybe even more. That's awesome. But, so- uh, Bruce had called. I was visiting Jersey, and he said he was working on a solo record and had a solo he wanted me to take a shot at. And I heard the song in his home studio, and uh, I was just so powerful and so unusual at that time for Bruce. I was really proud of him. It was just gorgeous. And we started plugging in foot pedals and, you know, one after another, and just hitting it with a lot of different choruses and delays and sounds came up with that cool sound and fortunately I I blew a solo after a few tracks that made sense to him and then made the cut and I was very proud of that and of course we've done that song many many times and uh, when we did the Tunnel Love Tour uh, one of my favorite things was we all walked on stage while Roy and Max played the opening and got our ticket for the ride from Terry McGovern, a dear friend, friend and Bruce's right-hand man for so many decades. We lost a while ago. It was a big loss. But anyway, that it was a mythical tour for me. And my second tour, so I was no longer the rookie and just had a lot, a new level of comfortability. So certainly uh, they're all great, but that was a real special tour, and that song still remains one of my favorites of Bruce's. That's awesome. Uh, two more questions, Nils, and I, I'm going to let you go. Once again, Nils Lofgren's playing uh, 8 p.m. Friday, May 8th, uh, at the uh, Lavoie Theater in Millville. It's, you can go to lavoie.net, L-E-V-O-Y.net. Um, so, uh, you know, when, when Bruce broke up the band in 90, and uh, was your perspective, you think, different than maybe some of the other members? Because you have been a sideman and you, with Neil Young, and then you had your own band, and you had your own solo stuff, and, uh, you know, some some East Streeters, basically, you know, that that's that was their life. That's that the, you know they didn't have those other those, those other things to bank on. Uh, did you help talk the guys through it a little bit, or did they were they all sort of okay with it? Um, well, <coughs> um, that's a complex question to answer. <laughs> yeah. On, on one le- on one level, missing um, that camaraderie and experience to play in a band of that greatness i don't think anyone was okay with that including myself on the other side of the coin everyone respects bruce and loves him greatly and honored whatever he needed to do and that's separate issues i mean certainly right. everyone was disappointed uh and and also respectful that if that's bruce's journey now then you got to respect it um you know roy had done massive successful producing and session work uh everyone had dabbled in other things but also i agree, uh, i think that since most of what I'd done was my own solo work. I think arguably, yeah, it might have been a little rougher to navigate in general for the other guys because that was more of what their life commitment was. And uh, I don't want to say I helped them through it. We, I think we helped each other. Right. Uh, we all talked a lot. I was living in L.A., so I saw Roy a fair amount and stayed in touch with everybody. Clarence and I always spoke every week no matter what. But really, I, I talked to everyone, and we all handled it you know the disappointment in various different ways and arguably it might have been a little easier for me because i just went back to what i've always been doing since 68 which is my solo stuff right nils we got about uh, one minute here but i, I know i want to cover this sure. real quick uh i, I want to play real quick uh, lauren miss you see uh, if you don't mind uh, a bonus track uh, sure, man. uh go ahead lauren the morning sun It don't shine as bright The evening stars Are dim tonight Your ancient voice Stills my fearful soul I miss you see I miss you see as any Springsteen fan will know, that's uh, that's a, a, a ballad to his, his long fr- uh, long friend uh, Clarence Clemens, who uh, who, who passed away. And uh, uh, you, you feel that it was just in you. You sort of had to get that out. Well, you know, uh, on my last album, Old School, I took my time and wrote about the pros and cons of being around for a while. And one of my greatest records, I think. And um, I originally written a song, I "Miss You Ray," about Ray Charles, and. <clears throat> Uh, shortly after that we lost Clarence and ever since I've been singing Miss You See and we put it as a download at my website and of course I'll be singing it in New Jersey uh, pretty much every night Uh, Clarence was a very powerful friend on and off stage and uh, the theme of the whole thing is about loss you know when the losses mount up sometimes you lose sight of what's around and actually on my 60th birthday we buried Clarence and I was miserable and my wife Amy to her credit dragged us all out to a dinner I didn't want to go to, a birthday dinner, but it turned out to be a very 
healing uh, long dinner with a lot of crying, laughing, and commiserating amongst good friends, and that's the whole point of the song. You've got to pay attention to what's left. Clarence is still with us in spirit, and he'll be there with me uh, when, when I get back out there playing. Well, we look forward to hearing that in uh, Millville. Once again, 8 p.m. Friday, May 8th, uh, $30, $40 day of show. Uh, go to Levoy.net. You can also go to NilsLofgren.com and uh, check out the Face to Music 10 disc box set. Uh, nine CDs and uh, DVD covering 45 years of music available on Amazon and everywhere else. Uh, uh, yeah, you can get it at NilsLofgren.com, too. And okay. In addition to the acoustics, you know, there'll be a lot of electric playing, a lot of jamming, and probably a little tap dancing, trumpet. It'll be a crazy fun show, so come check us out. It'll be good. Hey, Neil, it's a real honor. Thank you so much. Hey, man, really appreciate you talking uh, and spreading the word for me. Thanks for having me on the radio. All the best. Absolutely. Neil's Lofgren, uh, solo artist and member of the E Street Band. Thank you very much.